know that you've been asked at the last town hall meeting you were some things were mentioned to you, but now I hear that they, we've had there's been a lot more interaction between you and the chief and the two departments as far as policing uh, our community recently. So you may want to speak on that. Sure. Okay. No. First of all, thank you for having me back tonight. I see a lot of familiar faces since our last meeting across the street. Um, I've been here since November. I said last time I'm the chief officer of the 114th Precinct, which covers Roosevelt Island. Uh, I'm in, if not daily, a couple times a week contact uh, with Chief McMahon, who is director of security over here. So we, we go back and forth with issues as they arise on the island and try to have a, a two a two pronged uh, approach to tackling those issues. So that it's quality of life, crime uh, reduction, crime prevention, um, and hopefully you see some positive results. Uh, I know there were some issues previously before the two and uh, uh, two of us had a tenure here at the uh, at the area covering the uh, the island. But I expect positive things going forward. One of the things we're concerned about, and I want to come down tonight and speak to you about, is this burglary issue that we've had in the buildings over here on like 540, 560 Main Street. We're, we have a burglary pattern, and anytime there's two or more incidents that are uh, similar in nature, whether it be a similar crime, a similar perpetrator, a similar victim, the department will establish a, a pattern to try to have a, one investigator investigate those incidents and see if we can find out who's responsible for that. In those buildings, in that complex over there, we've seen several of these burglaries where people are walking through the halls, they're just trying to open doors. These entries aren't forced entries. You know, we don't have somebody picking locks or breaking through windows. They're trying to open uh, doors as they're walking down the hallway. When they find an open door, they go in and they remove handheld electronics from these apartments. Where that becomes a concern is, first of all, people are getting their stuff stolen from their apartments, concerns us. Secondly, what we've seen recently is there have been people home that didn't lock their doors when they're inside their residence. These people are coming by, trying doors, they find an open door, they don't know what's on the other side. They go into the residence and there's actually a, a person inside the residence that lives there that runs into the perpetrator that's trying to commit the crime. It hasn't escalated to the point where anybody's gotten hurt, seriously, but it's a concern for us. Um, we were fortunate enough this week to make an arrest in one of those uh, incidents. Um, the um, pattern is still an active pattern though, um, working with uh, the public safety guys, we're doing a crime, uh, crime prevention effort here on the island, but we're going to go to the building over there and kind of let the residents know what to do to protect themselves, um, what's going on first of all, so if you see somebody in the building that you don't recognize, or you see somebody in the building that maybe lives in the building that's trying these locks and taking opportunities when, uh, when the situation arises, you can call us, let us know, we'll respond over here. We'll make sure whoever it is lives in the building, and hopefully we can, you know, um, hold the person accountable that, that's committing these crimes and, and break into these apartments. You know, I, I want to say we're in the, the double digits now since November of last year when we first saw it. Uh, it subsided for a couple of weeks, and then it uh, it reared its head again early this year. So um, again, if you have any information, you know, please pass it along to to the chief and his crew. Call us at the precinct. If you have specific concerns, we have a crime prevention officer, John Glenn, Officer Glenn, who works at the precinct. His job is to go out and, get, and conduct surveys, crime prevention surveys. So he'll come to your residence, he'll come to your apartment. He'll do a survey and basically identify weaknesses in, in either your door locks, your windows, and he'll make recommendations to you to uh, improve your security in your, uh, in your residence. So that's something that's free of charge. It's open to anybody um, that resides within the precinct. And if you're interested in that, I'd be more than happy to, to pass, some, pass his, his information along to you tonight and uh, set up an appointment to come and uh, have him visit your, your residence or res visit your apartment. Is there a question, Matt? Yes. Yeah. Um, it sounds like, but maybe I'm not understanding completely, that most of what you're finding, most of this kind of activity mm -hmm. you're finding in the Eastwood building are, are buildings on the east side of the street, Roosevelt yes. Landing. Right, yes. Okay. Are you getting hearing anything in the other buildings? This kind of, of this nature. No, nothing like this. We've had the uh, 540 Main Street. I'm not sure if it's Eastwood 540, yeah, 560. Yes. That's that building in there. You know, so we've increased our uh, vertical patrols, our visibility in those buildings, along with the public safety guys. But specifically, those type of crimes we're seeing in those buildings over there. Right now. The reason I'm, at, I'm asking that question is, um, I sometimes distribute the newspaper um, every two weeks for for the wire. And I distribute it in our building, I've done it in other buildings, more often in Manhattan Park or here. And occasionally our neighbors leave their doors 
open, mm -hmm. I mean truly ajar, or you know just not completely closed and I will knock on those doors when I, lock, when I leave the newspaper for them and make sure that there's somebody, I try to let them know that I'm dropping the paper but that their door is not closed and I don't know if it's locked but it's not closed right. and I have seen that and I try to and I probably will pass that message along to the people who distribute for the newspaper to make sure that anytime they see a door that's ajar or you know even if it's not open but just resting that they need to knock on that door and make sure that they say on the wire distributor your door is unlocked you need to or your door is open just word of, uh, of mouth, even amongst community groups or neighbors, just if people know what's going on, mm -hmm. you can be your own best protection by just locking your door and securing your exactly. apartment, even if you're inside the location, you know, right. because, right. like I said, this is what we've seen, people just taking advantage of the situation. Sometimes you, there, there are family members in, throughout the building, and somebody will leave their apartment, they'll leave it open, and they'll go to visit another rel uh, relative or somebody on another floor, and right. just... They don't think. What is the information that you were going to give? Because we can also put it out. You have a number for people to call. Well, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you the crime prevention uh, office there at 114 Precinct. Officer John Glynn, G L uh, Y N N, 718 626 9324 or 9327. Okay. John's the guy that'll come around and he'll do the security survey in the apartment or the residence and make recommendations. Okay. He's, John's not here tonight, but his partner is uh, Officer Coleman, who's our Community Affairs Officer at the precinct, too. Hi. So uh, Hi. One, one or two of those guys will uh, come by and do the security survey. But really, what, what we'd like to get out tonight is just word of mouth. Like, this is what's going on in these buildings. This is what we've seen. These are the reports that we've, uh, that we've taken, and a lot of this stuff is preventable. You know, if, uh, if you secure your door, lock your door, see something suspicious, call us and let us know. So this yeah. isn't even just uh, with credit cards. I mean, because if I don't double bolt mine, you can get in with a credit card. I right. don't double bolt mine. The, the, there's no forced entry to the door. Like the, the, the door's not being pried off. We're not seeing uh, but the the doors that are kicked in. Okay. You know, if you have a flimsy lock, it's certainly something that's bypassable. Okay. Then, then it's certainly an option also. Okay. But, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I just have a quick question. You know, I know you have a lot of experience citywide in Queens with the large apartment complexes, how they handle these problems. Other other apartment complexes. Uh, I know we have uh, uh, building management does put cameras in lobbies. Have you ever heard of building management actually putting cameras along hallways? Is that yes. done or is that never done? It's, it it's is done. done. I oh, lived in my lived in Manhattan on the Upper East Side. Uh, there were cameras in the hallways. Yeah, I worked in um, in a, a, a apartment complex building that they had cameras in the hall. In Pierreville House on 68th Street, mm -hmm. and they have them in the hallways. Well, hallways, you know, common areas, lobbies, staircases, yeah. stuff like that. Any any time we can get cameras in there, it's it's a deterrent. But if something does happen, it's a great way to track somebody down too. I mean, she's had her hand up. So I'll come back to you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm very short. I'm the President of the Tenants Association in that building. Okay. Um, a couple of things. Number one, did you get any kind of uh, identification from people when someone you mentioned they actually came into the apartment and saw them? Did we get identification from folks? Did you get the, the did bad guy? ID? Did they did they give you a description? Yeah. Well, well we did, we have a description, yes. But, but we didn't um, get ID from the person. You no, know, no, I, I, mean, I meant the description. Right, a, a generic, you know, vague description, yes. You know, a lot, of, a lot of times it happens fast. As soon as the person comes in, knows somebody's in an apartment, they're not looking for a confrontation. They try to get out as soon as possible. So we get a generic clothing description, maybe a, a race or a, a sex of the individual, but okay. nothing definitively where we've been yeah, able to. I was home the other day, and uh, I got a knock on my door, and I was very, very suspicious of these people. It's two people. Uh, one is a young Asian woman, and the other is a, and she's about five four, five five. Uh, and then there was a man with her. Uh, he was a light skinned black guy, uh, very curly hair and mustache. Uh, and nothing they said made sense. Uh, they claimed that they were, you know, uh, doing some kind of a. Um, asking for contributions to an organization that didn't seem to exist. They had no, um, they had no identification with them. Did you open the door? Mm -hmm. uh, I opened the door because I was expecting management, and stupidly, and they were, I was expecting John Hatz. 
and he was coming at the same time. And so, without thinking, I opened the door. I'm going to recommend that you do two things. Number one, some of the apartments in our building, uh, people don't use their uh, their peepholes. Right. Some of them, the peepholes are painted over. <coughs> and so, you need to let management know that they have to go around and look at those peepholes and make sure that people can look through those peepholes. But the other major problem in our building is just 49 doors. In and out, egress, yes. Right. And you get into, if, if any one of those doors are unlocked, people can get anywhere in that building. And on every given night, and sometimes I go out with uh, Jack's crew and we check out the doors, and on any given night, there will be six to eight doors that are either wide open, and I mean the building doors, <coughs> wide open or broken locks. And it just is not a secure building. Mm -hmm. Anybody can get in that building, and that's why that building has a problem where nobody else does. Mm -hmm. That building has to be secure. Mm -hmm. Those doors have to be mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yeah, just, just on this, that's not really what I wanted to address, uh, but as long as this question has come up, it's not really something that the police can do, but, but what I think would be very important for the tenants associations and for RERA to do is to advocate uh, a better security system for the building, which to me I think would begin with a door, door people. Uh, to figure out a way in the comp. This is not your 